Good morning. How y'all doing? It's another episode of Truth Seeking Trucker. We're getting to our Father's Word in Matthew chapter 22. He's giving us a prayer. Father God, we pray for your direction to make uh, wise uh, your word, to uh, go through it with a fine tooth comb, that we may be able to understand these treasures that you left for us. Father God, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for another day of life. Thank you for our families, the food we eat, water we drink, the air we breathe. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, that we may be under, be able to seek your face. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, let's get going. All right. Chapter 22, verse 1. And it reads, And Jesus answered, spake unto them again by parables, and said, verse 2, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which had made a marriage for his son. 3. And set forth the servants to call them that are, were bidding to the wedding, and that they would not come. Verse 4. Again he set forth the other servants, saying, Tell them which are hidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready to come unto the marriage. Verse 5. But they made light of it, and they went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. 6. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. 7. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he set forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. So we remember before when Christ was talking about, um, we'll jump to Matthew 24, 37, 39, that the days, these days will be like the days of Noah. They mocked Noah for building an ark. They, they continue in their vanities. They continue in their things that did not matter to God, the pride of life. Um, disobedience, rebellion, breaking the law of God. And they went on their merry way. Matthew 24, 37 to 39. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of Son of Man be. 38. For as in the days of Noah, there before the flood, there were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. 39, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That, that's a definition of character. Doing the right thing when nobody when you think nobody's looking. I tell you, there's always someone looking. And that, and that one is God. He sees all. Matthew, let's go back to Matthew 21 through 28 to 32. Remember what Christ said about the two sons? Let's go ahead and go to verse 28. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons and the, and came to the first and said, Son, go work a day in my vineyard. 29, he answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. 30, and he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. 31, whether them twain did the will of the father, they said unto him, the first. The first one said they wouldn't at first, but repented and and ended up doing the work. Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. 32. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him. And when you had seen it, repented not afterwards, that you might believe him. Matthew 5. Blessed is the poor in spirit, for they shall be comforted. Remember, these ones are the religious type. The ones that look all nice on the outside, but inside they're ravaging wolves. They're, um, be wary of those. Those ones that fall into traditions of men, into ritualistic worship. When you go into a church and just feels dead and drab and lifeless. And you know, you know, when you feel that God does it specifically point denominations or things out he wants you to know what to look for the fruits of the spirit 
because there are going to be so many of them and some of them are going to have truth in them and some of them are going to have falsehood. And when they got falsehood in them, well, God says to flee from sin. So that kind of, that kind of gives you the idea of what to do at that point. Let's go to verse eight. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but when, but they which were hidden were not worthy. Nine, go ye before into the highways, and as many as you find, bid to the marriage. Whosoever will, all people, nations, and tongues, regardless of race, regardless of gender, male or female, regardless of rich or poor, slave or free, whosoever will. Verse 9. Excuse me, verse 10. So those servants went out into the highway and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. Verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a man that had not a wedding garment. What, how did he not get the wedding garment? The marriage supper of the lamb. The title of that. So there must be a, a marriage or a commitment to our Lord Jesus Christ. That is what they're talking about. He is the bridegroom. We are the bride. This man didn't have the wedding garment. He wasn't clothed in righteousness. He wasn't covered of his iniquities they were he was naked to the father let's see what happens verse 12 and he said unto him friend how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment and he was speechless 13 then said the king to the servants bind him hand and foot and take him and cast him into the darkness there should be weeping and gnashing of the teeth but weeping and gnashing of the teeth is a for sure sign of hell and they're going he's going into outer darkness as well it gives you a little bit more insight of what god was talking about the judgment without jesus atonement for your sins you have to be judged by the law romans six twenty three: the wages of sin is death so there is no guessing about that well god knows my heart well the book of Jeremiah 17, chapter 7 says, The heart is most wicked and deceitful. And uh, it tells you right there. But one of the scariest words in all existence, depart from me, I never knew you. And that's at that point where, where you're going to spend eternity. That's a very scary to me as well. You know, but you won't be scared unless you understand that God exists and Christ exists came to die for your sins the cost of sin who you are in christ there's a lot of work to be done to to renewing your mind and uh understanding that god's word is the true word of god and uh i'm king james only also i truly believe you can the the and and what i mean is um the king james only in the english translation i believe in the greek and the hebrew you can learn things but i don't speak greek and hebrew uh, I probably cherry pick words here and there, but to really be fluent in it, I would not read it continually as I was fluent in it. I'm going off a subject, but let's go to verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. So God's not a respecter of persons. He calls the people. Serve me. Help your, your brethren, your fellow man, your neighbor. Help them. Bring them to me. Let me wash them. Let me cleanse them. Let me get them ready for the marriage supper. Right? Whosoever will. There's not enough time to 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 continually waste on someone who's just going to refuse to hear it. And a lot of those people are the ones who are closest to us. And that's hard. That's hard. And I feel it too. But you know what? We don't ruin an opportunity for them to go down the road and hear it from another brother and sister in Christ that maybe will speak the truth and to reach them. We don't get mad. We don't get frustrated. <clears throat> we may uh, move on and leave it in prayer. And uh, when the Spirit of God 
comes upon us to pray for him again, we'll do it again. But to continually uh, deal with belligerent denial, it's it's uh, it's costly to a mortal being that only has so much time on this earth. Whosoever will listen is who we bring it to. The harlots and the publicans. Verse 15. They went, the Pharisees, and took counsel how they might entangle him to his talk. Verse 16. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God and truth. Neither uh, carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. So they're um, they're trying to butter up Jesus a little bit before they um, try to entangle him. You see how they're trying to do it? They're trying to work on uh, Jesus' ego, which he doesn't have one because he's the son of God. And he's deserving of praise. And he died for our sins. But they're they're trying to use his what they believe is manhood that gets a lot of us in trouble against them. Do you, you know people like that? Do you know people who, who stroke your ego so then they get you and you end up with a knife in your back? Gotta be careful of that. If anybody's gonna give us uh um, understanding that we're on the right track, we, we should seek God's approval above all. Verse 17, tell us be, be therefore what thou thinkest thou. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? They're about to um, <clears throat> try to entangle him with the civil laws and the law of the land. Verse 18, but Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, why tempt me, ye hypocrites? 19. Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. 20. And he said unto them, Who is this image and subscription? Who is the face on, on this? 21. They said unto him, Caesar's. Then said he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto, the, unto God the things that are God's. 22, when they heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. They couldn't stump him. See, this is this is a dying world. The system we have is dying. God didn't come here to fix that. He came here to, to bring souls to repentance and redemption through his bloodshed. So be it. So be it. But you understand when these tyrants, they they squeeze blood out of a turnip in the poor and they cause suffering to the poor. God's judgment comes upon them. So it's a slippery slope for them. They are held to a standard. And yes, we don't get to get that nice new boat or the shiny new car at times because, you know, we're getting taxed. And yes, we should vote against things that are going to cause us hardship. I'm not taking from that, but you got to think like an immortal. You got to think about your time with God. You got to think about everything that all the stuff that's behind us. And did it really matter? Did it really matter? And a lot of it is no. It's a fleeting and dying world. Uh, the structure, it's, it's just, it's going to perish. But if you want to look up that word hypocrites, I, I, I brought up the Strong's Concordance 5273, and it's a stage player or an actor, a pretender. So these hypocrites, what Jesus is saying is they're actors. They're acting a certain way. Maybe when they're put in power, they're positioned there, and there's a puppet master behind the scenes who we know is Satan. Verse 23. The same day came to him, the Sadducees was said that there is no resurrection and asked him, 24, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die, have no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up the seed unto his brother. 25, 
Now there was with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. 26. Likewise, the second, also the third, and unto the seventh. 27. And all, and last of all, woman died also. So the last brother, the seventh brother died, and then the wife died later on. 28. Eight. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall it be in this of the seven? For they had her, they all had her. Twenty nine. Jesus answered, said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. Thirty four. In the resurrection they're neither married nor given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. The angels of the God in heaven, excuse me. So that was the Genesis six problem is that these angels wanted to marry women. They're immortal beings that have no need for procreation. They had not given that because there was no need for it. And that was God's plan. Also in the book of Enoch, when these fallen angels married and gave in marriage and had children with these women, they defiled themselves because they went back and forth into the heavens. And God doesn't allow sin up there. And we're a sinful creature. We've uh, fallen away at this point. And uh, we're stained with, this, with the, uh, the stain of sin. And when we're given to marry, or when we're, well, let's go ahead and just read. Verse 31. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read which was spoken unto the God, saying, 32, I am God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. The God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. 33, and when the multitude heard this, they were astonished in his doctrine. So, when we become angels, we have no need for marriage. And it does not matter. The things that they brought up just doesn't matter. And it shows their ignorance in the scripture. And, um, let me see. Hold on. Give me one second. Okay, go with me real quick. <clears throat> First Corinthians 15, starting at verse 50, and we'll finish at 55. And it reads, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither the corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, that's the seventh trump, the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible, in corruption, and this mortal shall have to put on, or must put on immortality. 54, so when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying what is written, death swallowed up in victory. 55, O oh death, where is thy sting, O oh grave, where is thy victory? Speaking of the devil. So, would you rather give it, in, give it into marriage or have a body that's free of death, pain, suffering? You know, I love my wife, and I hope, you know, uh, to see her in heaven. And I believe we will at some point. I don't know if God's going to have certain jobs for us, but I know we'll be able to see our loved ones in heaven. And I know he, he know that in our heart we want to see our families and our children. Uh, but I believe we're going to have a, a we're going to have duties. We're going to have things to do for the kingdom of God. All right. Going back to Matthew, verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, it's not good when you tempt the Son of God. But they didn't know. I don't think this lawyer knew, but he was coerced.
by evil men, wicked men, to test a, a, an, an innocent. 36. Master, which is the greatest commandments in the law? 37. She said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, with all thy mind. 38. And this is the first and great commandment. 39. And second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So the simplicity of this is my go-to, especially when I got to go back to basics. Understanding when things get a little um, confusing at times. We're, we never outgrow this. I started with this and I always come back to this. When I get a little confused by the, either by my own actions or the enemy. Uh, come back to this one. God will meet you at your level of understanding. But understanding also that if you don't grow, you will go. You can't survive off mother's milk forever. You have a purpose. You have a destiny. And you walk in the supernatural gifts of the spirit. You shall see that. God's very beautiful and gentle and kind and loving. Not only he wants us to love him because men will fail us. Mankind will fail us, but also gives gives it back to them as well. Love your neighbors as, as yourself. How you want to be treated, treat them. If you won't like certain things, why would you think your neighbor would like that? Understanding that. Growing in that truth. 41. When the Pharisees were gathered together and Jesus asked them, 42, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They said unto him, The son of David. 43, he said unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying? 44, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit at my right hand, and I make thy enemies thy footstool. So understand that you, you aren't seeing with your spiritual eyes because you don't have them. Why would David say, my Lord, the Lord said unto my Lord. It's confusing for them. They can't see who's right in front of them. The Christ, the Messiah, Jesus. And then God said that he's going to uh, he's going to uh, separate the enemies of God and do so when it comes time to it. Give them their period of, of probation where they can repent. He's, he's uh, God is uh, patient and long suffering. But eventually some of them just won't budge. So they're just going to continue causing mayhem and destruction in this world. Verse 45, If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? 46, And no man was able to answer him or word, neither does any man, for thou forth work him any more questions. For they knew the answer, but they didn't want to say it, that he is the son of God, that he is the one at the right hand of the Father. And um, that was it. That was it. If they're refusing to the bitter end not to give up power. Probably didn't even believe the, the scripture, but they've seen the power of what hope and faith can do to the human heart and the human spirit. And they use religion to capture the minds of the people. And um, they're not the only ones in history that have done this. The Prince Machiavelli speaks on that. To control a people, you have to win the hearts and minds. And using religion and politics is part of it. Using religion to bring them to nationalism. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with loving your country, but if it goes against God's word, then you know the answer to that. God's word is sovereign above all. 
God bless you. Take care. Have a great rest of your day in the name of Jesus. Amen.